welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. You are in store for a fantastic weekly WW meal prep. I have four, yes, four fabulous recipes for you. A breakfast, two lunch recipes, and a snack. I cannot wait to share them with you. Every single one of them is so incredibly delicious and of course, WW friendly. So if you wanna see what I have in store for you this week on my weekly meal prep, just stay tuned. For this week's breakfast, I'm gonna be making an avocado breakfast sandwich. Now this is something that I'm actually going to prepare each morning fresh. If you do decide to make these ahead of time, if you work outside of the home, then I would recommend just leaving off the avocado and adding that in at the very end, right before you eat the sandwich. But you can certainly assemble the rest of the sandwich and add the avocado on at the end. I am going to show you what is in my breakfast sandwich, and then I will be showing you what a completed breakfast sandwich looks like and give you the smart points from there. So first, what is in the avocado breakfast sandwich? I'm going to be using the Trader Joe's sprouted wheat sourdough bread. This bread is so delicious. It is thick and dense. It is two smart points per slice, but there are seven grams of protein per slice. So it's definitely gonna give you that protein boost with 14 grams in the sandwich. It is a true two smart points per slice. So I will be having two slices, of course, to make my sandwich. Now you can sub a different bread. You could really use any bread that you want. You would just wanna recalculate the points based on your choice of bread. But I'm gonna be doing the Trader Joe's sprouted wheat sourdough. You'll need some salt and pepper. Each sandwich is going to have two eggs, fat-free shredded cheese, a slice of Jarlsberg light Swiss cheese, or you could do any other one smart point worth of cheese. And then of course you're going to need some avocado. So let's put together a sandwich so that I can show you what it looks like finished and exactly what I'm gonna be having for breakfast. So the first thing I'm going to do is cook two over hard eggs. So I did crack the yolk of my two eggs. So we're gonna let these cook down. We are going to add our cheese directly to our eggs. So let's get our bread toasting and our avocado measured out. So we're gonna get our toast started. There's my two slices of bread. Over here on my food scale, you can see I measured out just over one ounce of avocado. My avocados are really small, so I'm going to store it in this avocado holder. Now this avocado holder is amazing. I got this at Ross. It literally keeps your avocado fresh. You just store it in the refrigerator. So whatever is left over will go into that. And then my one ounce of avocado for my breakfast sandwich. So eggs are just about ready to add our cheese. Once your eggs have cooked most of the way, we're gonna go ahead and add on just a little bit of our fat-free shredded cheese. We are not using enough of this cheese to add a point. So we're literally just going to add a little bit onto our eggs, and then we are going to top it with one slice of our Jarlsberg. We'll let that cheese kind of melt up while our bread is toasting, and then we'll put together our sandwiches. So here is my breakfast. So let me show you my sandwich here. So I have two slices of the Trader Joe's sprouted sourdough bread. I have my eggs with my melted cheese and then my one ounce of avocado. Basically, we're just gonna flip that over, make it into a sandwich. And then I'm gonna be pairing that with one serving of blueberries. So this is what I'll be having for breakfast each day for this week. So my sandwich is a total of six smart points. Four lunches this week are part of my lunches. I'm going to be making the Skinny Kitchen Chicken Chow Mein, and I'm also going to be making some Skinny Kitchen Egg Rolls. So I'm having a Chinese type of lunch this week. So first, I wanted to get started on the Chow Mein. So let me show you what is in our Chicken Chow Mein from the Skinny Kitchen. You're going to need some soy sauce, minced garlic, cooking spray, brown sugar, I use the Sucrin Gold. I purchased mine off of the Nettrition website. There is a link down in the description box. If you click the link, it'll take you right to Nettrition and you can do some shopping. It does help me track what you're ordering as well, so I know what to order to show you in recipes. So definitely recommend the Sucrin Gold. It is seriously the best brown sugar alternative. For my pasta, of course, I'm gonna be using the Fiber Gourmet, and we're gonna be doing the light spaghetti, so it just simulates a Chinese chow mein. 
charming. I love this pasta so much. You can also purchase this off of the Nutrition website, the same place you can pick the sucre and gold up. So just add both of those items to your cart. I love this pasta. Look at these ingredients, 19 grams of fiber, eight grams of protein, 23 carbs, and it's non-GMO, and that's per serving. But the best part, you guys, two ounces of this pasta is only three smart points. Traditional pasta is anywhere from five to six smart points. And in my opinion and my husband's opinion, we like the taste and texture of this pasta way better than traditional pasta. It holds its shape. It doesn't get gooey and gummy. It is seriously amazing. So while you're on the Nutrition website, order the Fiber Gourmet Pasta and the sucre and gold. Definitely add these two things to your cart. You're also going to need some ginger, either fresh or powdered, two tablespoons of water, a large onion, some celery, shredded green cabbage, and of course, some chicken. So let's get started on our chicken chow mein. So the first thing we need to do is get our chicken cooked. You can see that I cut this into pretty small chunks. This was two large chicken breasts. I am only prepping for four days this next week, so I made sure that I had about a half of a large chicken breast per day so that I'm not overeating the chicken. So I'm just gonna get this cooked down, and in the meantime, let's chop up our celery and our onions. So while our chicken's cooking, I did wash my celery and got my onion ready. We're gonna chop this and we're gonna slice these kind of on the diagonal and we're gonna throw them all in a bowl here. Both of these are cooked down together. So let's get chopping so we can get cooking. chicken is just about cooked through still a little bit pink we're gonna go ahead and add in our celery and our onions so that we can kind of get those sauteing down with our chicken and then over here I have a pan coming to a boil to cook down our pasta so we're gonna let these saute down and let's make our sauce Let's put together the sauce while everything is cooking down. So I have one third cup of my light soy sauce, and then it wants you to add an additional tablespoon of soy sauce. So I'm going to do that. So it ends up being about six tablespoons total of the light soy sauce. And then we are going to add in two tablespoons of our sucrin brown sugar, two tablespoons of water, two cloves of minced garlic, and you can do fresh or the jarred like I did. And then lastly, we want a couple of tablespoons, or I'm sorry, teaspoons of fresh ginger or about a teaspoon of the powdered ginger just because it's a little bit more concentrated. And then we're just gonna give that a quick stir and it is ready to be added once our veggies and chicken are cooked down. Once those onions and celery start to cook down a bit, I went ahead and added that entire bag of shredded cabbage, and we're just gonna let this continue to cook down and soften a little bit. I have my noodles here going on the stove, so they are coming along nicely, and you are getting steamy. I added my noodles once they got cooked down to my pan. We've got a full pan here, guys. So this is all those vegetables, the cabbage, the celery, the chicken, everything. And then I'm gonna kind of get this combined, and we'll add in that sauce. All right, sauce is in. Oh, you guys, this smells so good. So I'm just going to stir this really good together. Let it kind of warm through. And then I'm actually going to transfer this to a nice big bowl. And that's what we'll actually put into our meal prep container from. Because I'm also going to pair this with some spring rolls. So as soon as I get this mix, I'll get this into a bowl. I'll show it to you. And then we'll start on those spring rolls. So here is the chow mein. This looks so good, it smells amazing. I wish you guys could smell this. So I'm literally going to set this aside and let's put together those spring rolls. Here is what we need for our spring rolls. Now the original Skinny Kitchen recipe calls for a peanut sauce to dip the spring rolls in. I am not going to make the peanut sauce I'm gonna save the points and just eat the spring rolls as they are. Maybe dip them a little, in a little bit of soy sauce, but I'm skipping the peanut sauce, but it will be down in the description box with the recipe if you wanted to add that. So here's what's in our veggie spring rolls. So I'm gonna be using these Blue Dragon spring roll wrappers. These are so low points. I got these at Walmart. And then some green onions, pepper, Rice vinegar, I have the sugar-free, so it's zero points. Minced garlic, light soy sauce, 
fresh or grated ginger, whatever your preference is, snow peas, shredded carrots, broccoli slaw, and cabbage. So let's get started on these spring rolls. So we only have a couple of things to chop, some green onions, and we're gonna go ahead and chop up our snow peas just into smaller pieces. I'm gonna put them into this large bowl because we're actually going to combine all of our cabbage and carrots and broccoli slaw into one bowl. So let's get these chopped up. And to throw my game, not really why I came. Oh, do me a favor, pour me another glass. Poor hearts are never last. So in my bowl are my green onions and my chopped up snow peas. I'm going to add about a cup of shredded carrots. I'm not measuring you guys. I'm just gonna throw some carrots in there. And then we are going to add our entire bag of coleslaw or cabbage, I should say. And then we're also going to add our entire bag of our broccoli slaw because it wants about two and a half cups of each. And then we're gonna give this just with our nice clean hands, a big mix, get those snow peas, green onions, carrots, everything nice and mixed together. And then that's the filling basically of our egg rolls. I'm gonna pull out these big pieces of cabbage only because they're not gonna fit in those egg roll wrappers. So we're gonna get this nice and mixed together and then we'll be ready to stuff those egg roll wrappers and get them into the oven. So super easy. This again is a veggie egg roll. So this is perfect if you are vegetarian or vegan or you have a protein in your main dish like I do, you can make this as a fun little side dish. So. Let's get this nice and mixed together and into those egg roll wrappers. So I'm happy that I decided to look at the directions because we actually are going to cook down this mixture a little bit, which makes sense. It'll be a lot easier to roll into those wrappers. So I have all of my slaw, all of my veggie mixture here in a large pot. And I'm using a large pot because there is quite a bit of it. To that, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a spoonful of my minced garlic. We want a couple of tablespoons of our rice vinegar. I'm not going to measure, I'm just gonna kinda eyeball a couple of tablespoons. And then we want a tablespoon and a half or so of our light soy sauce. Now you can use coconut aminos if you would rather as well, but I'm out unfortunately and I forgot to pick them up at Trader Joe's. So I'm gonna go with just some light soy sauce. We are actually going to add in just a little bit more ginger as well. Again, I thought I had ginger paste and apparently I do not. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and grind in some black pepper. We're gonna let this cook down until this has softened a little bit. So my egg roll mixture is done. It is nice and softened. So I'm actually going to put this into the refrigerator for about 15 minutes to get it cool enough that we can handle it and then we'll be ready to roll our egg rolls. So I took my spring roll wrapper and you're just going to put it into some warm water until it is softened like this and a little bit more pliable. To the wrapper, we're going to go ahead and add our filling. And we want about a third of a cup of our cabbage mixture per spring roll wrapper. So that's about a third of a cup. And then we are going to go ahead and fold in your sides. That will kind of protect that filling. And then also we're going to fold it over, kind of tuck it in just like you were creating a burrito and then roll that wrapper around your filling. And look at that, you guys. Doesn't that look so delicious? So make sure that everything is nice and sealed. And then you wanna go ahead and put your seam side down here on your tray. So I have mine with my little rack and I'm just going to go ahead and fill up all of my spring roll wrappers and then we'll get those into the oven. We are gonna put these in at about 425 degrees. So here are my spring rolls. I did only decide to make seven of them because I screwed up on the wrappers. So I'll give you a tip. Each wrapper you wanna get wet individually. If you get them all wet at once, they stick together. So I learned that. So I decided just to make this much of them. Whatever is left here of my mixture, I'm literally gonna mix this in with my chow mein and that'll give that extra little bit of veggie and crunch to that. 
but let's get these spring rolls into the oven at 425 degrees. I did spray them with a little bit of nonstick cooking spray until they are cooked through and crispy. All right, so here's our chow mein mixture. I did mix in the leftovers of the spring roll mix and it just bulked it up. It didn't add any additional points. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my meal prep bowls here and you can see that I've added one fifth of the chow mein mixture to my bowl. So this bowl is full. And then I just sprinkled a couple of my sesame seeds on there. This big, huge bowl is nice and full. So I'm gonna go ahead and dish up five equal servings of the chow mein. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do five instead of four. I was gonna do four, but I, there is so much here. That would be way too much. So I am gonna go ahead and do five servings. So a full week. I'll be back to show you what these look like. And then I'll give you the smart points at the end for both the chow mein and the spring rolls. Look at these spring rolls, you guys. These look so incredibly delicious. I just pulled these out of the oven. I'm gonna go ahead and let them cool a bit. We'll get them into our meal prep and I'll show you exactly what I'm having for lunch, give you the smart points. So here is what I'm gonna be having for lunch. I am so excited, you guys, like so excited. So I have my bowl of my chow mein. I did end up dividing it into five bowls instead of four. I am going to count the same amount of points because I added in those extra vegetables and sauce from the spring rolls. So we're gonna keep it at the same points and then I'm going to have a spring roll as well. So the chow mein for one fourth or fifth, however you decide to divide it out, is only three smart points because the only thing you have to count points for is the pasta. And if you use the fiber gourmet, your points are incredibly low. So three points, you guys, for this entire bowl of chicken chow mein. And then the spring roll, because it is a veggie spring roll the only thing that has points is the roll wrapper itself and it is only one smart point you can actually have two wrappers for one smart point so this chow mein and spring roll is only four points isn't that crazy this whole bowl of food four smart points so each day i'm going to have a bowl of my chow mein and one of my spring rolls i may dip my spring roll into something if i do i would just add the point for whatever it is that I dip it in. Maybe some of the Trader Joe's soyaki. That might be kind of good. And if I just dip, it would be zero extra points. So four smart points for the main portion of my lunch. I still have some of those delicious red pears from Costco. These are amazing. So I'll have one of those. And then for dessert, I'm gonna have one of my sweet nothings. I love these, as you know. This particular one is just caramel. It is so good. 30 calories a piece, one smart point. Just remember if you go to two of the sweet nothings, it does bump up the smart points to three. So I always just have one. It's a nice little sweet treat after lunch. You can buy these on either the Protein Wise website and down below is $10 off your first order. Or if you're on Nutrition anyways, picking up Fiber Gourmet Pasta, you're picking up the Sucre and Gold, the Thinables, you can add Sweet Nothings to your cart there as well because they sell them now, which is super exciting. And there is a link in the description box as well for Nutrition. It'll take you directly there. So one chocolate covered caramel is one smart point. So you guys, that makes my entire lunch, including dessert, five smart points. For a snack this week, because I'm gonna be roaming around a lot, I wanted to have a portable snack. I'm going to be making a chewy peanut butter chocolate chip granola bar from scratch, you guys, from scratch. So let me show you what is in this granola bar. You're going to need some sugar-free maple syrup, oatmeal, not quick cook oats, but just traditional oats, PB2. I'm gonna be using this organic agave five. It is an agave substitute, only five calories. I actually found this at Ross. You'll need a little bit of salt, vanilla extract, or in my case, I'm gonna use the Trader Joe's vanilla bean paste. I love this stuff. You'll also need some chocolate chips. I have the Bake Believe from Walmart. These are the semi-sweet, no sugar added. I'm going to be using sliced almonds, dry, unsalted, dry toasted, unsalted from Trader Joe's, and then you're going to need some canned pumpkin. So let's get started on these granola bars. 
So to make our granola bars, the original recipe actually calls for coconut oil. If you are going to use coconut oil, you will need to follow the recipe directions precisely, and that is cooking down the peanut butter and the coconut oil to melt it. But because I am not using coconut oil, I am not going to go through the cooking process, so I'm just going to combine everything here to my bowl. So I have one half of, or I'm sorry, three quarters of a cup of my PB2. And then to that, I'm gonna add three quarters of a cup of sugar-free syrup. This is a recipe that Amanda Lewis, over on Amanda Lewis's YouTube channel, she designed this recipe and it makes the best peanut butter. So basically in place of water, you're adding in sugar-free maple syrup and it makes this sweet, creamy peanut butter. Look at this, you guys. Yum. So again, this is Amanda Lewis's recipe. I would definitely go check her out over on her YouTube channel. She is also on Instagram as RIP Fat Girl. So I'm going to go ahead and put together that peanut butter mixture. I mean, seriously, you guys, this looks like peanut butter and it is so much sweeter with the sugar-free maple syrup. So to that, in place of the coconut oil, I'm going to add two tablespoons of pumpkin. And that is why I did not have to cook it down because it is in a not in a solid state like coconut oil is. So go ahead and add in a little bit of pumpkin. And then we're going to add in half of a cup of our agave five sweetener. We're also going to add in half of a cup of the slivered almonds one teaspoon of our vanilla bean paste. I'm just gonna kind of wing that. This vanilla bean paste is awesome if you have a Trader Joe's near you. We wanna add in just a dash of salt just to kind of enhance all of those flavors, cut the sweetness. So go ahead and give all of that a stir. Get that nice and combined before we add in our oats and our chocolate chips. So it is going to be a fairly thinner liquid because you actually want this to coat those oats anyway. So this is kind of what our mix, the consistency of our mixture. To that, we're gonna add two and a quarter cup of our oats. Let's get that mixed in. And then we're gonna pop in a half of a cup of our Bake Believe chocolate chips. If you are using Lily's, your points most likely will be a little bit less than mine, only because the Bake Believe have a little bit more calories. I just like them better. They're a bigger chocolate chip as well. So they're bigger in size than the lilies. So there's one half of a cup of those. Get that combined together. And then we're going to break out an eight by eight pan, line it with some parchment paper and put in our granola bar mixture. But this looks so good. You guys, it smells amazing. So I have my eight by eight pan here and a piece of parchment paper. That's just going to line the pan so the granola bars come out a little bit better. And then what we are going to do is add our granola bar mixture directly to the parchment paper lined pan. And we wanna get this even as much as possible along the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and press it nice and firm into the bottom of our pan. So let's get our mix in there and then I'll show you how to kind of get it nice and firm and form it into those granola bars. So here are our granola bars. I think I said put these in the oven. These are no bake, you guys, so they're super simple. I'm going to cover this with some saran wrap and put this into my refrigerator. Let this chill until they're firm, and then I'll be back to show you the completed bars. We'll cut them into serving sizes, and I'll give you the smart points. So I just pulled these granola bars out of the refrigerator. They've been in there about an hour. My goodness, I'm excited for these. So we are gonna cut these into 12 servings. I'll be back to show you the serving size and to give you the smart points. Here they are, cut into 12 servings. And you guys, this is one of the granola bars. This is a good size serving. And you can have one of these granola bars for only four smart points. That's it. They are homemade. You made them at home with whole natural ingredients. So good, and again, that is a good size granola bar for only four smart points. Here are my snacks for the week. We're keeping it super simple. Again, need portable snacks. I have a super busy next couple of weeks. So I found these at TJ Maxx. These are the salt and vinegar veggie straws from Breaking News. You guys, these are amazing. These are better than salt and vinegar chips. I bought two bags. I wish I would have bought more because they are seriously so good. You can have two cups, 
two cups, you guys, for four smart points. That is a ton of these veggie straws, and I am not kidding you. If you can find these at your local Home Goods, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, get them. They are so good. So I'm going to be bagging these up and taking these along with me. They're portable and they're seriously so good. And then of course for my morning snack, I'll be having the Built Bar. Quite a few different flavors here, including the brand new coconut almond. You guys, if you love almond joys, you will love this bar. It, it literally tastes like an almond joy. It is that incredibly delicious. These bars are only three smart points. They are loaded with protein, fiber, they keep you full, and they literally taste like a candy bar. There is no protein bar flavor at all with these. It, they are seriously amazing. Check them out at BuiltBar.com. On the screen is my code for 10% off and free shipping. Plus down in the description box, if you actually just click the link, it automatically will apply the 10% off. You don't even have to enter the code. So it makes it so easy. But check out these Built Bars, three smart points with the exception of the peanut butter that is four, but you guys will not be sorry because these are so incredibly delicious. Thank you so for joining me on this week's WW Weekly Meal Prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing the four recipes that I shared with you. Again, I'm so excited for my upcoming breakfast, lunches, and snacks. I love meal prepping. It saves me time during the week. It helps me stay on track and it just makes my overall journey so much easier. All four recipes are linked down in the description box as well as any discount codes or any links to web websites directly that I can offer to you are down in the description box as well. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell. That way you're notified every time I upload. You don't want to miss a single video. Please thumbs up this one. It helps my channel tremendously and of course comment down below let me know which one of these four recipes are you most excited about thank you guys again so much for watching and i'll see you all in my next video bye guys